Hello everybody, or um, I should be saying yo yo everybody. See what I did there? Okay, stop, cut. <laughs> Yeah, boy. I want to be a yo-yo man, he cried. Make me a yo-yo man. But the yo-yo master did not answer. He just kept on yoing. Wanna play Fortnite? to the Terraria modded yo-yo experience where I'm going to be trying to be Terraria with some new sexy modded yo-yos. This video is going to be a hot diggity dog train ride and you're going to want to stick to the end for these yo-yos. I've also put down a list of all of the mods that I've used in this playthrough. So quick shout out to the mod developer for all of these cool ass modded yo-yos that I'll be using in this run. Thank you for developing this mod, Moomoo. You're the best. I hope this video inspires you guys to take out these yo-yos for a spin. <laughs> no pun intended. And also before this video starts, just want to mention that this video is part of with gamer subs, baby. So just a heads up, you guys are going to be getting some free samples later, but only if you keep watching this video but anyway let's start the video first things first we create our world and create a character fitting to this playthrough as soon as we spawned in i began my routine maintenance like i was an overworked janitor i began by checking all the possible recipes that were added to see how the vanilla yoga progression was actually changed just looking at pre-hard mode not a few things were changed other than adding a few new yo-yos like the iron slash lead yo-yo but in hard mode that looks pretty good so of course our first goal is to acquire the wooden yo-yo requiring us to find some cobwebs and wood since we're only using yo-yos this game it means that i can't use any other weapons i immediately dove into the caverns and was able to acquire a handful of cobwebs or leaving the cave because it was like many things in life a goddamn fucking dead end and so we went into the desert in hopes of a better opportunity i recall there always being a ton of cobwebs above cacti and by accident i stumbled upon a succulent desert temple i was able to loot myself a magic carpet from underneath but then i proceeded to die in a sand trap yep this playthrough is starting off dare i say suffocating i continued to explore i continued to explore i got some heart crystals and after acquiring some more iron ore i realized that i could deviate from the vanilla yo-yo progression because instead of crafting a wooden yo-yo we can now craft an iron one it was hard it was heavy it was round perfect for not only killing enemies but potentially mentally scarring them for the rest of their eternal lives with the ability to use my hard single ball to distress our enemies i already acquired two hooks from a piranha and skeleton giving us a potential for a grappling hook already our dps right now is pretty bad but if you didn't know the yo-yo does 25 percent less damage if there is a solid block between you and an enemy meaning that not only is master mode working against us to make us cry and whimper like a little baby but now our yo-yos are also working against us I pressed on into the caverns as we can still use the cobwebs we've already gathered, but instead of crafting a wooden yo-yo, I crafted a white string in order to extend our 2.5 incher into a mighty 6 incher. Now we're packing some rain. Now we do something I do not do often, and that is farm the jungle in order to get a jungle weapon upgrade. That's right, ladies and ladies, we are now going to attempt to acquire the Amazon yo-yo, a jungle yo-yo created from lovely stingers, man-eater vines, and delicious jungle spores. Only problem is we're fighting against jungle enemies. For example, let's see the damage that we do against the these things. God damn. We're gonna be here for a while. While collecting some jungle spores, I saw a groovy unexpected surprise. The skeleton merchant. Perhaps early on we could acquire our first yo-yo counterweight. Shit. Well, at least we got some bombs to better traverse the ass fuck of a fest that the jungle is. Hopefully we don't die and have to walk all the way back. And great, it's a blood moon, meaning walking back to the jungle is near damn impossible with all these enemies. And great. What the fuck? But luckily for us, my little dear dumplings, Oh and behold, a new NPC had arrived. A new modded NPC of the yo-yo overhaul mod that I am playing. The skeleton peddler is now here. He will now help our journey with supplementing yo-yo and yo-yo accessory items. And as we continue to beat more bosses and progress through the game, the peddler will begin to confide in us like we're his own little dumpling and sell us better items. Since this was a blood moon, I began setting up a fort with the peddler, fighting off the blood moon enemies in order to acquire enough funds to actually purchase a new yo-yo from him. With enough time, I bought the rally yo-yo, one that actually takes forever to get in vanilla when you farm shellies or whatever the stuff in the caverns. As you guys are watching me struggle with this blood moon, like I said in the intro, you guys have a chance to get some free stuff now. See that death? You don't want to end up like me. So if you didn't know, I recently partnered with Gamersubs, and they've offered me the chance to offer you guys, my dear little dumplings, a free 100% no strings, no soul binding contract, 100% completely free sample pack. What the fuck? I've actually been on Gamer Subs myself to edit this video, and it's by heart fucking delicious. So yeah, these 100% free samples are a great way to try Gamer Subs if you never had it before. But the thing is, you can only redeem it after 48 hours of this video being released, and if you use my code Adrian. I wanted code Adrian as a little stinky fart, but apparently that's too unprofessional. But in case you're watching this 48 hours later, if you use code Adrian, you will just get 10% off, which is still pretty nice. But either way, this is a really small way to show my thanks to you guys for all the support recently. Oh my fucking god.
Bruh. But yeah, the link is in the description. Use code Adrian. It's super easy, super tasty, 100% free. My favorite flavor is the uh, dragon fruit punch flavor. This one. It's almost empty. Yeah, anyway, get the free samples within 48 hours. Yeah, thank you guys once again. I hope you guys enjoy. Who wouldn't want to keep dying over and over and walking mile and mile to go back to a place that they hate with their ever persisting soul? Oh, wait, that's me. I don't fucking want to, but shit, I need to because I need this fucking yo-yo. Yep, that's right. I'm going to go to my 9 to 5 every single day in order to provide my spoiled son the Nintendo Switch Xbox 9000 for Christmas. But instead of him saying, I love you, dad, we're going to be receiving an ungrateful that's it. Truly, I keep wondering to myself if this yo-yo is really going to be worth it. It's really hurting me. Not just my physical body, but my emotional side too. See, mom? Men do have emotions. But finally, after an agonizing fucking hour of pure agony, we were finally able to craft the beautiful, choke-slamming, titty-milking, slapping Amazon. This yo-yo was touching me in ways that I can't fucking imagine. The damage. Ass blasting. That's the only word I'm gonna use. On top of that, there was a new ability which shot out periodic thorns at my enemies. So not only is the Amazon doing decent damage it's also inflicting poison shooting thorn now we're really ready to ass blast a boss i found a ruby gem corn on the ground and continued mining for life crystals and gold i usually don't get gold armor but for some reason this world was like the california gold rush with the amount of veins sticking on the wall i also ended up finding an eye of cthulhu spawner in a chest and began making preparation an armor set was crafted and a platinum crown made just in case we decided to fight the king slime first all we needed though was a pair of hermes boots and by dear god like santa hearing upon my wishes i went into the desert and got a pair of dune rider boots and thus i went ahead and started building the most complex arena you've ever seen in your life a straight line and i started fighting the eye of cthulhu this fight was long mildly difficult but it was easy as long as you had your head goddamn put on straight because master mode eye of cthulhu had nothing on me in my defense my dps movement and my abilities in general were off the charts when well easily did the eye of cthulhu fall after the fight i put on the loved beloved Shield of Cthulhu and turned the demonite award into bars. Our next goal right now is to craft the corruption yo yo, the malice, the malice. And although the DPS is not much better than my Amazon, it will be a core component in crafting the Knight's Edge version of the yo yo's called the Ab Four. I went into the corruption to gather more demonite and began setting up an arena to fight the Eater of Worlds when all of a sudden I got an unwelcomed notice Bruh. death. Death and death is all that happens to me. I have a yo-yo, but what is a yo-yo good for? Killing single enemies, not an army. But with enough time and dedication, whatever you want to call it, we finally defeat the goblin army. But that doesn't necessarily help our endeavors with the Eater of Worlds. So I decided to make a more worse decision than my parents made when they had me. I went to go fight Skeletron, and I died immediately. So I decided to go ahead and buy a yo-yo string. We now try to find the regular skeleton merchant in order to secure us a counterweight because my DPS was suffering, and I'm not really quite sure to do of myself right now but instead of finding the skeleton merchant man we find the rat king himself the goblin tinkerer we buy ourselves a workshop and upgrade our dune rider boots into lightning boots perhaps now we can stand a better fighting chance with the eater of worlds i also crafted the magiluminescence an accessory that i never even knew existed until mars told me to make it every single fucking playthrough that we do thank you mars i hope you have a good day i also finished crafting the full gold armor set crafted a heart lantern and i still fucking died goodness me it seems like i'm stuck within a predicament i wonder what would be the turning point in this battle i'll give you a fucking hint is a goddamn shackle. Just by lucky chance, a warding shackle happened to drop, and it gave me an astounding plus six defense, which just so happened to be enough for me to strangle the Eater of Worlds and murder its entire bloodline after several years. Finally, with access to Hellstone, we make way to the Skeleton Peddler in order to buy our first counterweight. We then immediately went down to Hell to gather some Hellstone, or some Hellstone armor, and also the Cascade Yo-Yo. Along the way, we were able to get a warding magma stone and also had a sneak peek at the recipe for the Abhor. We're so close. We just need the Valor from the dungeon. Guess what? There's no fucking stopping us. We're decked out like a motherfucking tank, baby. We walked to the dungeon with our strap on and proceeded to fuck the bone marrow out of Skeletron. He dropped a new yo-yo for us to use. One with infinite life. Easy. Glorious. And now we begin our descent into the dungeon. After enough golden chests, we were finally able to get the Valor yo-yo. We immediately go back home and combine all of the components we've gathered so far in order to make the Knight's Edge version of the yo-yos. The Abhor. Before descending down to hell, however, we ended up finding something called an ability ring. Now, what incarnation is that, Squidward? What is this? You might ask. Apparently, it's like the goddamn avatar state because it brings you out the true abilities of a yo-yo. The problem is that this ability ring costs more than the Californian fucking monthly rent, so I need to go ahead and farm some bosses for some money. And since I remember running into some beehives in the jungle, I thought that the Queen Bee would be an excellent choice. And so I began constructing an arena in its hive, and I went to fucking pound town on the Queen Bee. Killing her offspring in front of her was just another Tuesday afternoon for me. And she ended up dropping the Queen's Gambit, which was the bee yo-yo which was 
actually pretty OP. It would spit out bees upon contact with enemies, which in turn would home onto enemies further ahead. But that's not the reason why we're here. We're here to get some money. So I continued raising enough funds like a little boy scout. And after a few more kills, I was able to avoid the ability ring from the skeleton peddler. And thus, we finally unlocked one of the most crucial accessories in the entire run. The ability ring was like the Dragon Balls. It unlocked my true potential. This now means that our damage output was being delicately amplified, like boiling hot oil on a fucking pan. Its damage was now AOE. We now move on to our favorite koala enthusiast, the Wall of Flush. Now, according to my dear old sweet dumpling waffle time in his vanilla master mode Terraria yo-yo run, this was one of the most hardest difficult fights in his entire life. Luckily for us, we're using mod. I'm sure this can't be as difficult. I'm sure this can't be as difficult. It seems that this fight is taking the sweat out of me. Well, as I show you this fight of me smashing my keyword, please look at my dear lovely red subscribe button. It's free, it's fake, and it's hypnotizing you to click. Anyway, this fight was like my calculus class in high school. It was a little bit harder than I expected. My range wasn't as long as I'd want it to be, and also my domain wasn't a consistent axis either. Let me also point out that our app war has been triggering its newly found ability. I mean, look at the size of that void. Dare I say, our damage is definitely on the positive side, with a slope of M equals 40 and a Y intercept of a whopping fucking zero. After enough long all the gagging we did it now here we are in hard mode where our yo-yos are truly gonna go for a real fucking spin we go ahead and fight a ton of rapes that decide to visit me after they destroyed all of their altars and i got an unexpected smudge yo-yo this seems to have been dropped in pre hard mode so we tuck it in a blanket in my chest for future use we now take off to the most exciting part of the terraria adventure hard mode or mining i gather some cobalt and immediately craft a new yo-yo the cobalt yo-yo i said earlier in the video that a bulk of the yo-yos were made in hard mode and well here they are this mod introduces yo-yo excavators as well it's an accessory that lets you mine for yo-yos so for the sake of showing off this mod here it is look at it i did the same thing with mithril i made a mithril yo-yo mithril yo-yo casing excavator thing but before mining titanium i went over to the skeleton peddler for the most game-changing accessory yet we get our hands on a yo-yo bag and you're probably wondering it's a yo-yo bag How'd you even buy it? First of all, you need a yo-yo glove and a counterweight and a string to combine it. So what's the point? What, what's happening? Well, you see, in this mod, the yo-yo bag is a literal bag. It, instead of using the yo-yo glove and counterweight to craft it, it actually gives them their own accessory slot for you to put your own thing into. And just you wait, my little dumplings, because as we upgrade this bag, yes, we can upgrade this bag, by the way. We're going to be getting more and more slots for more yo-yo accessories. Now it's time to get those yo-yos. I went after the first yo-yo that always drops when I play vanilla Terraria, the Amarok. We go ahead and make a little winter hut, but immediately get jumped by deer clops. So we kill his wife in front of him before killing him and continue farming as I also wanted to gather an ice feather so that we can craft some ice wings. We gather some souls of flight to spice the farming up and while farming ice golems, an ice string drops, upgrading my string with more range and an additional frost ability. Within an hour, I gave up and began farming harpies in order to get harpy wings. I then spent the next hour farming souls, accidentally found the queen slime spawner, crafted full titanium armor, and periodically checked the skeleton peddler for new items. Ooh, the format C is here. What does this do now? What the fuck? So apparently the format C now has a planetary orbit around it. I decided to test this out on the queen slime before fighting the mechanicals, and if I could describe this fight, it was us keeping candy away from a baby. We're going to business. We're kicking ass and making face with the idea that we're starting to beat entire bosses with a fucking string and a ball. After we kill the queen slime, we go downstairs to our abusive uncle's basement to gather more souls for the mech boss summon item. We stumble upon a well-welcomed philosopher's stone, put it in our breast pocket, and beginning preparations for the destroyer. We summon up this mechanical bastard and realize that we might be flying a little too close to the sun. So what do we do? Well, we summon him right back up, stacked up with potions, a killer instinct, and a desire to win, not knowing our lesson. I began swapping my yo-yos faster than a high school senior with his freshman girlfriends. Where's my hug, destroyer? Where's my goddamn hug? And within sheer moments, the destroyer crumbles. Where's my goddamn hug? He falls under the weight of our modded yo-yo goodness, and with the spoils from this battle, we're able to craft some new yo-yos. We acquire the code 2 yo-yo, but it doesn't stop there, because this mod adds a new recipe for a new modded yo-yo called the Code 3. Now, we all know that the sequels should be better than the former. I'm talking you, the nun. We take this yo-yo out for a spin, and unlike the nun 2, look at that momentum. It's just stunning. It's crazy. It's pretty hype. Before we take on the high school bullies, the twins, we craft a pre mode accessory called Around the World. It's a yo-yo trick that causes your yo-yos to spin around a 5-meter radius similar to the counterweight. And well, 
It's pretty fucking ass right now. But that's why we have upgrades, people. We have upgrades. We summon the twins right on up, and immediately this fight is taken in immediate detours. The twins are fast and fierce. Keeping them close is a death sentence, and unluckily for us, our yo-yos only function within a five meter distance, so this fight was tricky. I had to keep them away from me, but close enough to deal enough damage. Spasmatasm starts spazzing out indeed, making this fight turn out more intense than expected. But after a while, we take them down, and after Tang going with the Retinazer, we also finish the fight. After the fight, we get an unexpected reward. We receive the Eye of Cthulhu, a solar eclipse drop modified to match our state in the game. This yo-yo now has a laser ability and a fire ability, and so we test this out on the destroyer because we need hollowed bars in order to get a full hollowed armor set, and best I can do is give it a three-star Yelp rating. This yo-yo is decent, but when paired with my other yo-yos, our hand is... That's kind of pretty good, actually. It's pretty, pretty fucking good. And so now we pay the bus fare and summon up the last mechanical boss, Skeletron Prime. First thing we do is we sit him down. We tell him he's on his last and final warning. And slap him with the crude remark that he's heading to detention if he doesn't listen to us. But here's the thing, my dear friends. This is a trap. We're sending him to detention anyway because we're sick of this guy. And so we take him down elegantly. And reaping the rewards of the fight, we can finally craft some new delicious upgrades. We start crafting some new bars from the Yo-Yo mod using the souls of the mechanical bosses combined with titanium bars. With these bars, we are able to upgrade our nice edge yo-yo, the Abhor, into the true Abhor. And just look at this thing. This is the most beautiful thing I've seen in my life. It's much more jaw-dropping and tantalizing than the Mona Lisa itself. This is where the mod truly begins to show its marvels. We also upgrade our Around the World to Tier 2 for additional revolving yo-yos. And then, we start mining Glorified, and with enough bars, we are able to upgrade our Code 3 into the true Code 3. Now we have two true yo-yos, and although they look very similar and have very similar stats, we have to gather all of them and to make the final yo-yo into this mod. And thus, we make our way into the jungle, filled with dangers no longer dangerous to us, because we are the apex predators, baby. I summon Plantera up immediately, and we begin fighting this forbidden dance. This fight was like a high school bully pushing a shadowing middle schooler up against a locker after the said middle schooler bumped into him by accident. Plantera had nothing on us. We move evasively and throw our yo-yos violently quickly and painfully, and before the minute was over, Plantera fell down. And it was now time to enact the next stage of our plan and the next stage of final upgrades. We do something unpredictable. We sneak into the Lizard Temple and steal enough ingredients to summon a Solar Eclipse. And thus now begins the adventure of a 5 hour grinding session for loot. The Solar Eclipse enemies now drop Solar Eclipse Souls, Broken Hero Yo-Yos, Broken Hero Rings, and their drops can be turned into Solar Eclipse Bars. Now the problem is that these enemies are really fucking strong. Strong enough to completely overpower us and our starving inventory, so we die. We die. Guess what? We also die. Nothing I did seemed to outweigh the true sheer damage that these enemies were doing to me. And the thing is, we needed a lot of materials. In order to make the solar eclipse bars, you needed to melt down solar eclipse weapons. But the problem is, these things would take forever to drop. Yes, you can get the deadly spear staff, but what's the point when you have to kill 50 of them to get one? So when our first batch of solar eclipses ended, I decided to take this opportunity to upgrade what we have. So we headed to the dungeon, we gathered ectoplasm, and now we had just enough items for a huge massive upgrade. I took the smudge yo-yo from my chest and I upgraded it to the true smudge. But Adrian, I thought we already had two true yo-yos, why must we make a third one? Well you see my little dumplings, we take out our three true yo-yos and we put it in a motherfucking blender with some other materials that we procured from the solar eclipse. And for the first time in our playthrough, we create something that not even God understands. We create something called the Tempest Yo-Yo. Now, it was time to redo the solar eclipse with this newly found power, gave to us by God himself. And well, more damage doesn't mean more defense because I was wrong. I still fucking died. But it does mean more killing. We continue farming these enemies like we're baking cookies on a conveyor belt. We keep going on and on, and even after death takes our body, after three long hours, we had enough materials to craft most of the upgrades we needed. Here we go. The first thing I did was I crafted the Ring of Coalescence. It does this. I'm not going to read it. You guys can read. I know you guys passed fifth grade. We then crafted the Eclipse String, giving us new slicing ability attacks. And then, before giving Golem the big meat missile, we craft the Yo-Yo Bag Upgrade. We craft the Yo-Yo Suitcase. Fitted with new sexy slots for more sexy accessories, we take this mega meat package to the lizard temple and beat gold. We take this micro meat package to the lizard temple and activate an actuator bomb in order to have a usable arena and we began rumbling down with golem. This root beer chugging brownie bag was taking damage and falling down on his knees. Our yo-yos were emitting a radius large enough to hit the golem head and arms at the same time. I will admit, the sweat was trickling down to my nose, it was fucking boring, but my yo-yos 
My yo-yos were balling. We take the golem down and reign victorious over his dead body. From this fight, we immediately gain a new upgrade, the golem string. Then, using the beetle scales from the golem fight, we were able to craft a new modded upgrade to our yo-yo suitcase. You thought the suitcase was crazy? We made the yo-yo beetle bag. This was one of the craziest upgrades as it gave us another slot for another yo-yo glove and another slot for our drill case. Now, even though we actually had extra slots before, I only realized now that these extra slots were actually extra slots. I was under the impression that they were vanity, but because of my pea brain, I didn't realize it. But guess what? The upgrades don't stop there. We craft the black hole yo-yo, an upgrade giving us the power of using a void onto our rock on a string. I then bought the support glove mentioned earlier to add an additional yo-yo. And now after buying a yo-yo stat tracker, we make way to the lunatic cultist. We take our 2023 Lamborghini and attempt to ram it into the lunatic cultist only to find out that he had motherfucking wall spikes planted on the floor. And thus we die miserably, but this isn't what God has planned for us. And so we go back to base three, gathering materials before we fight the next bosses, because perhaps this time I got too eager to crack these nuts. We craft the mechanical glove in order to get a boost to our yo-yo stats and also craft the master ninja gear in order to replace our shield of Cthulhu. To ensure our victory, we gather forces like the resistance. We located the shimmer biome, got the life regen perma buff, and then I got the shimmer yo-yo bag, which is an alternative upgrade to our beetle bag, which instead of getting extra slots, we get an additional yo-yo ability to phase through entire objects like Casper the fucking ghost. I also made another beetle bag so that I could use the phase bag just in case I need it. Furthermore, we initiate the Martian Madness event in order to get one more bag that could change how we use yo-yos. This Martian bag would give us infinite range of our yo-yos, getting rid of our number one weakness, and we didn't get it. I farmed Martian UFO after UFO, and I didn't get it, so I instead gathered life fruit, Chlorophyte, beetle armor, and went to the ocean to set up a Duke Fish on Arena. When I said that we're trying to bring the meat to the meat shop, I really meant it because the loot is a cult this needs to be absolutely destroyed. We summon this smelly grape juice loving fish and take the battle to the skies. Our DPS was slapping hard. We're frying this fish mid fight as we speak. With our pre lunar event gear, we had no problem killing this fat pig. Wait, that's kind of mean to say. The Duke drops another yo yo, the Kraken yo yo, which actually seems to be doing more consistent damage than my black. Hole, but then we continue opening treasure bags until we got the duke wings and then killed the wall of flesh in order to get the goat skull mount with a better flight option new slippery mobility movement we're able to tango foot to foot with the lunatic cultist we dodge his projectiles like their immediate death sentences to the pits of hell and lava our yo-yos to the lunatic cultist's face we smack his face with our jaw droppingly heavy fat nuts and laugh when he starts crying the lunatic cultist within four minutes lost his death dropping a new yo-yo with a better DPS than all of my other yo-yos, and finally triggering the lunar events. We take our stake to the nebula pillar. With manipulated spawn rates, this pillar was a breeze. With manipulated spawn rates, this pillar was a breeze. We take these nebula fragments, turn it into nebula string, giving us an additional buff to range, and thus we continue forth, taking on the stardust pillar, taking on the vortex pillar, and finally, before challenging the solar pillar, we take a little detour. We go into the hollow and we summon the MILF of all MILFs, the Empress of Light. According to the patch notes of this mod, she drops an exclusive yo-yo that does one of the highest damages. But to get it, we must defeat the Empress of Light. We dodge the attacks and sweats as we feel the blades of light piercing to our skin like saltines when you're eating soup. This fight is hard, harder than me. Our DPS is good, but our range limits what we can do, and the Empress of Light is fast on our tail. Master Mode begins kicking our left ass cheek as we start swerving out of control, panicking as we look at our decreasing HP. But we make it to phase two, barely, and keeping our momentum, we dodge what needs to be dodged, and remember that this is absolutely nothing compared to Eternity Mode. And with this realization, our confidence rises, and it does something in our pants as we take down the Empress of Light, and we reap the rewards of the fight. We received the Spectrum Yo-Yo, an excellent contender for single target damage, and thus we make way to the final phase of this fight. We use this Yo-Yo on the Solar Pillar, and before long, the Solar Pillar falls. We go home to prepare for the Squid God himself. He's itching to kill us, but little does he know, so are we. He appears and tears open the sky like a potato chip bag, and we begin throwing our Yo-Yos at his eyes, and we are shocked to see our DPS skyrocket to the moon as his HP falls down faster than an erection at a YMCA shower room. 
We take out his eyes like we're blindfolding a five-year-old child before he gets surprised for his birthday party. But instead of a surprise birthday party, we're sending him straight to the Shadow Realm. We deal immense damage to his physical and emotional body. We swap between our yo-yos like they're expired used condoms and begin puncturing the Moon Lord's heart. It's at this moment where we realize we're at the pinnacle of greatness, and soon we will be at the pinnacle of yo-yo goodness. The Moon Lord takes his final breath as we squeeze it out of him with our yo-yo. And finally, the Moon Lord is dead and we are left with the spoils of war. We pick up the treasure bag and begin scourging through the loot. We take the Luminite and finally upgrade our yo-yo to the Terrain Ring, opening an accessory slot for us to use. However, since we didn't get the Terrarian, we purchased treasure bags from our local modded NPCs so we don't have to stop on the Moon Lord again until we finally get the last yo-yo for vanilla Terraria. But remember folks, this is modded Terraria. We're not at the main course yet. We're only eating the appetizers. We craft solar armor and with this loot, we set off to finish what we started. We pull up the Zenith yo-yo crafting recipe called the Convergence. And with the help of the skeleton peddler, we've actually been already collecting a lot of yo-yos from the start of the game. And actually most of the yo-yos are able to be purchased. However, there are a few yo-yos that need to be made and crafted. For example, the Sheik yo-yo crafted with hollow materials, the Thin Mint yo-yo dropped from Blood Moons, and finally the Pumpkin and Frost Mint yo-yos dropped from their respective bosses. So, like worker ants in a busy ant colony, we get to work. We first aim for the hollow materials to knock out the easiest yo-yos to get. We gather crystals, craft two wooden yo-yos, and turn one of those wooden yo-yos into the chick. Is it the sheep? And now, the event yo-yos. We trigger a blood moon, farm enough enemies to get the thin mint within sheer moments, and quickly start up the pumpkin moon. With manipulated spawn rays, we start razor cutting through the waves and begin farming the pump king. With our post moon lord gear, it was like smacking a titanium wiener into a Crayola crayon. Within a few kills, we got the yo-yo. And then it was time for the frost moon. We start off the event and give it a fat wet whirl. Our terrarian is cutting up the crowd like they're raw pieces of chicken, and after a few kills of the ice queen, we finally get the last yo-yo we need. We go back home, and combining all the yo-yos like Thanos with the infinity stones, we craft the zenith of yo-yos. The Convergence. At this moment, it's like we got the best ending on a dating simulator. We successfully seduce all of the anime girls, and now we can use all of their powers to rule the entire world. So the first thing we do is we take out this power and test it out on the squid god himself. And it wasn't even fair. Taking candy away from a baby would be an understatement. We do so much damage that we almost kill the Moon Lord's eye in one complete cycle. We take this power and go mess around. Unfortunately, since we don't have much enemies to test around with, we only settle with a few events. But as it goes saying, the only true way to experience this yo-yo is to use it yourself. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to check out this mod, it's the Moo Moo's Yo-Yo mod. I put everything, including the Discord link to the server and mod list in the description. So hopefully you guys go check that out, show some support. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And it's been Adrian, guys.